Hi, welcome back developers. In today's video, I will introduce you to the different types of attacks on blockchain consensus. One of the form of attacks on a blockchain is directed against the consensus. The two best known are the Sybil attack for proof of stake and the 51% attack for proof of work. If you're new here, this video is produced by Tibo and is made by me, Alex, and on Eat the Block, we help Web2 developers get into Web3. A Sybil attack is an attempt to manipulate a P2P network by creating multiple fake identities. To the observer, these different identities look like regular users, but behind the scenes, a single entity controls all these fake entities at once. This type of attack is important to consider, especially when you think about online voting. Another area where we are seeing civil attacks is in social networks, where fake accounts can influence the public decisions. Another possible use for civil attacks is to censor certain participants. A number of civil nodes can surround your node and prevent it from connecting to other honest nodes on the network itself. This way, one could try to prevent you from either sending or receiving information to the network. And this use case of a civil attack is also called Eclipse attack. One way to mitigate civil attacks is to introduce or raise the cost of creating an identity. This cost must be carefully balanced. It has to be low enough so that new participants aren't restricted from joining the network and creating legitimate identities. It must also be high enough that creating a large number of identities in a short period of time becomes very expensive. In the proof-of-work blockchains, however, the nodes that actually make decisions on transactions are the mining nodes. There's a real-world cost, namely buying the mining hardware and consuming electricity associated with creating a fake mining identity. In addition, having a large number of mining nodes still doesn't suffice to influence the network meaningfully. To do that, you would also need large amount of computational power. The associated costs make it harder to cyber attacks to occur on a proof of work blockchain. Nonetheless, the proof of work blockchain is still vulnerable to certain types of attack. The best known type of attack on public proof of work blockchain is the 51% attack. The goal of a 51% attack is to perform a double spend, which means spending the same UTXO twice. To perform a 51% attack on a blockchain, you need to control a majority of the hash rate, hence the name. A malicious miner wanting to perform a double spend will first create a regular transaction spending their coins for either a goods or for a different currency on an exchange. At the same time, they will begin mining a private chain. This means they will follow the usual mining protocol, but with two exceptions. First, they will not include their own transaction spending their coins in their privately mined chain. Second, they will not broadcast the blocks they find to the network, therefore we call it private chain. If they control a majority of the computing power, their chain will grow faster than the honest chain. The longest chain rule in proof-of-work blockchain governs what happens in case of such a fork. The branch that has more blocks to it and accordingly represents the chain created with a larger amount of computing power is considered the valid chain. Once the attacker has received the goods or other currency bought with their coins, they will broadcast to the private branch to the entire network. All honest miners will drop the honest branch and start mining on top of the malicious chain. The network treats the attacker's transaction as if it never happened because the attacker did not include it in his malicious chain. The attacker is still in control of their funds and can now spend them again. Just to compare a proof-of-work and a proof-of-stake attacks, a proof-of-work blockchain does not suffer from a civil attack because there is a large hardware and energy cost in testing each node to solve arbitrary cryptographic puzzles. With the proposed exercise, it can be seen that proof-of-stake network, if it keeps half of its circulating coins in delegation, is 40 times more expensive to attack compared to a proof-of-work of similar capitalization's value. The higher the delegation in proof-of-stake, the more expensive the attack. The higher the price of your cryptocurrency, the more expensive the attack is for either of the two consensus. In this exercise, the cost of the validators to run their nodes have not been considered, which would reduce the attack barrier as well because the net profits are lower after subtracting the expenses to sign the block. 
On the other hand, proof of work has higher costs by requiring specialized hardware to be able to mine and require a lot of electricity to protect the network. And all of this is used to solve arbitrary mathematical equations, which implies that the net profit is much lower and therefore this reduces the attack barrier compared to proof of stake. With that said, we have covered some of the most common types of attacks on consensus blockchain. In our next video, we will see how you can protect yourself as much as possible from these types of attacks. If you wish to learn more about blockchain cryptography, feel free to check this video out. We will see you again next time. Bye!